What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Elliot Delp and today we have a special little review for you. We are going to be going over the 6.5 Grendel by Alexander Arms, alright? So this should be a very interesting review, so let's get right into it. So, like I said before the intro rolled, we are going to be reviewing the uh, 6.5 Grendel from Alexander Arms. Now, as you may or may not know, I'm a huge 6.5 Grendel fan. I have a Diamondback 6.5 Grendel. Absolutely love it. Use it for everything. Coyotes, deer, everything. So, somebody offered to loan this rifle out to the channel for me to do a review on. And I jumped at it. So Alexander Arms is local to me. Um, they are out of Radford, Virginia, and that's not very far from where I'm at. So I was like, heck yeah, I would love to review one of their rifles. Because I know they started out by making the Grendel, and um, I mean, what an opportunity, right? So I had very high expectations for this rifle. For someone that invents the dang bullet at shooting, it ought to do good, okay? So, what about it? These rifles are super, I don't want to say expensive, because rifles get a lot more expensive than what this one runs, but they are on the higher end. They are very, um, uh, they're not cheap. If you go onto Alexander Arms' website right now, the Grendels will run at the lowest. The lowest price Grendel hits right at $1,500. That's with no extra options, no anything. So that's the bare minimum to get into the Grindel game from Alexander Arms is $1,500. And I think they run all the way up to $200. So super nice high-end rifles. Um, like I said, $1,500 for an AR-15 is getting on up there since you can buy them. I know my Grindel was about $700, so keep that in mind. But we don't have one of those rifles. This rifle is an older Alexander Arms rifle. Um, all the ones on the website now are at least 18 inch or, or higher in terms of barrel length. This is a 16 inch barrel. Okay, so this is one of the earlier models. Um, so I, was, I had a hard time finding a lot of specs on this actual rifle. Um, so I'm just going to do kind of the best I can in terms of what's actually on this. Um, I usually try to do a lot of research into every rifle I get and this one was the same but they don't offer this anymore they don't offer the configuration and Grindles weren't especially Alexander Arms Grindles weren't as mass produced as other rifles like PSA's rifles or other things like that where they're just spitting them out left and right super inexpensive rifles okay so let me talk about what's on this one this rifle will start from the front. It has an A2 flash hider, um, which is nothing special. It's a nice flash hider. Um, now we get straight into what's probably the most expensive thing on the rifle, other than the Alexander Arms little badge here on the side. This is an FN 6.5 Grendel barrel. Okay, it has a one seven and a half twist on it, and it's chrome line. So awesome barrel. FN makes very nice stuff. I mean, the SCAR, they make Palmetto State Armory's premium line. Um, they, their, their barrels are in a bunch of different stuff. Known for reliability, known for being very, very good barrels. Alright, working our way back, we have the gas block. This gas block has a small Picatinny rail piece on it. No big deal. I wouldn't really say it's a low profile. You'd probably have a hard time getting a free-floating rail across the top of it. Um, but that's fine. That's no big deal. Moving further back, we have the M-Lock um, or Magpul M-Lock rail on it. This is not a free-floating rail. This is pretty sure it's one of those that, uh, yeah, it, it is. So you should be able to pull that back and these slide in. Um, which I, I've reviewed rifles with this uh, handguard system on it plenty of times and I'm, I'm okay with it. I have no problem whatsoever with it. It's nice. 
Um, not my favorite. I always prefer free float, but nevertheless. Um, moving further back, we have the uh, upper and the lower receiver. The upper has marks across the top of it, T marks, um, which is nice. Especially, I think when this rifle was starting to come out, all this stuff was like newer. So it wasn't as standard. I know just doing research 15 years ago, the AR-15 world was completely different. Um, or not 15, of course 15 years. Five years ago, the AR-15 world was completely different. Um, so that's nice, and it's always nice to have these. I know all my rifles have them now, so I don't know if it's that big of a deal anymore. Um, 70-75 aluminum, pretty mil-spec stuff. Nice, nevertheless. Okay, flipping the gun around, avoiding my head when I spin it. Um, you have your Alexander Arms, little sigil right here, AA. It's a little shield, pretty cool. And then the Radford, Virginia. I would like to build an AR-15 from an Alexander Arms lower. I just need to find a place to get one. Um, just because it's Radford and it is close. Um, and then for the grip, this grip's nothing special. This is just your standard furniture that you'd find on any mil spec AR-15. Okay. And then you have your standard trigger. So this trigger is a, a about a seven pound pull. It's not the smoothest trigger. Let me let me rack it. It was clear, actually. Clear. Um. Yeah, it's, it's about like what you'd expect. All right. So this rifle doesn't have a ton of features to it, and that's perfectly fine. I mean, when this rifle was coming out, it wasn't feature driven like it is today most of the time people um, just bought these things and they just wanted a black rifle and they just wanted an AR-15 and that's fine it's perfectly good it's set up with a P223 by Nikon on top of it um, for the most part this rifle the owner of this rifle uses this for deer hunting and um, pig hunting and P223 works fine for him so that's just fine for me Alright, and that's what I did the testing on, or with. So, let's talk about shooting it in groups. I was a little disappointed in the accuracy. It was probably me, but I can get better accuracy out of my um, Diamondback, but my Diamondback does have a longer barrel. Um, not that that really has anything to do with it. I mean, it might have a little bit, it might have more to do with velocity. But I'm just thinking of things that could be. Um, but the groups weren't exactly what I was hoping for. So I'll put the groups up on screen right now. Um, you can see the Hornady Black. That was the first group I shot. And it was about 3 inches at 50 yards. Um, next one was a custom load, which I will pop up on screen now. The person sent me the load. Middle group was about, about the same, about 2 and something. And then the final group was Wolf. I shot four Wolf bullets uh, just because when I shot the third one, I kind of pulled it and I thought it was grouping pretty good. So honestly, I think the Wolf grouped the best and it grouped right under an inch and something. But at 50 yards, those are going to start to spread out at 100 and so on and so forth. I was wanting some. I was wanting a little bit tighter. Um, I was just wanting a little bit tighter. And I know AR-15s aren't the most accurate rifles in the world, um, but I was hoping for a little bit more, especially out of such a pricey rifle. I know this isn't the $1,500 rifle that's on the website now, but it was still 900 and some bucks when it was bought, and that is a good bit, you know? So there was a little bit left to be desired, but... Um, the quality of the build is very good. I don't think you can go wrong with buying it. Um, I would have to put my hands on a new one now. Um, I heard rumors that they were bought out, but I'm not completely sure. Um, someone asked me the other day, like I said, we are local to them, asked me if Alexander Arms was still owned by the same people that started. I don't think they are, um, but I could be wrong. I know it was founded by Bill Alexander. Um, but I, I'm not sure. But in conclusion, I think it's a very nice rifle. Um, it's hard to beat the barrel on it. It's hard to beat FN stuff. 
So, I mean, it's all a toss-up right now. I mean, is it is it worth the extra money? I know you can go buy an 18-inch Grindle from Palmetto State for hey, five, six hundred bucks. You know, um, I know you can buy Diamondbacks for seven hundred. So it's really what you're willing to pay for, and is it worth it? Um, some might say Bill Alexander all the way. And one thing I didn't mention that I, I should have mentioned, the different bolt types. So um, I'm not exactly sure, and I'm sure this is where I, I'll tell you I'm unsure of the bolt type in this. I know they have a Type 1 and a Type 2 bolt for patent reasons. Um, I'm not sure which bolt this is. And I do know my Grindle is a Type 2 bolt. Um, it, I'm not sure what exactly that means, um, I, but I do know it was for patent reasons. So, just wanted to put that out there. Anyway, but I hope, I think, I think that about does it for the video. Um, I wish, I wish I could do more testing on a newer one. And I wish I could shoot more groups with the newer one and have a little bit more experience out in the field with the newer one. Otherwise, other than that, the gun was reliable. The gun grouped decently. Um, not the best I've ever gotten, but definitely not the worst. I've shot a lot worse. So, keep that in mind. But I hope you guys did get something from the video. Go comment down below what you think of the video, how you thought I did. I'm sure somebody will comment. And uh, tell me what you'd like to see next. But if you did find it useful, like and subscribe. So I think that about does it, guys. I appreciate everyone for watching. And as always, take someone outdoors. I will see you all next time.